Hi lovely viewers, it's me again your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers over u.s elections on uh, uh africa as you know that uh, the dice has been cast and the final the final results have been released in the united states of america where the elections were held yesterday and as we speak right now this is official and confirmed it is done and dusted uh donald trump is back into office once again uh, defeating the joe biden administration together with uh, madam kamala harris i have in the studio discussing issues of uh, elections in the USA and also the dynamics where the elections are concerned in the continent of Africa is known to be a radical politician very instrumental and critical on matters of national governance but of course he is a pan-Africanist some of you may not be aware of the other side of him but uh, that's who he is is also patriotic friend secretary general his name is uh, honorable Raphael Nakachinda. he joins me on set discussing a number of issues be on standby as we continue embarking on this uh, discussion sg good evening and welcome to the program uh, good evening mr p and uh, good evening to our viewers uh, wherever they are watching us from and i'm um, uh, honored that you have invited me today uh, for us to discuss numerous issues that would want us to engage with the people of Zambia and those that are watching across the continent. Thank you so much. A quick refre reflection. I know that uh, uh, we ha you haven't visited KBN TV from the time. Uh, you, uh, of course, at some point you were, uh, I don't know how many times you've been now detained by the Zambia police. You know, I'm hosting you. Uh, at least maybe i should say for the first time from the time you are released from uh, police cells mm. where you stayed for over 10 days uh, how many times have you been returned so well, I, i've lost count well i've been summoned uh, to the police uh, for well i've been summoned uh, to the police uh, for about 33 times Mm. I have been uh, arrested and detained, uh, arrested about 20, I think 21 times. Mm. I am appearing before court, I think there must be about uh, eight uh, in the high court, others in the subordinate court, mm. but all bordering on um, uh, issues to do with the freedom of speech. Mm and uh, freedom of assembly uh, in our quest or my quest to be a voice for the voiceless pointing out the issues mm. that um, the current government of UPND um, undertaking that are detrimental mm. to the interests of the ordinary Zambians who may not be able to have the privilege like I do to speak for themselves mm. and to that effect every time you are critical and you raise issues and mostly issues that uh, clearly exposes the UPND mm. their response has never been to clarify their response has been to deploy the police to arrest those who speak mm. so i have been among many who have been victims of um, police brutality and abuse mm. uh, by the european government uh, purely to try and attempt to silence us mm. that has been um, you know unfortunately my uh, price to pay mm. uh, the last time i was detained i was detained for two weeks actually yeah and uh, taken to three different police uh, stations first it was Cheston police mm. next it was um, west Sud police which is basically far from from here mm. uh, which is basically Lusaka, I mm. think about uh, uh, almost 20 kilometers out of Lusaka, 20-25 kilometers out of Lusaka, uh, purely to try and also deprive me from having, um, you know, friends, relatives and everybody to visit me so that uh, it is basically prejudicial 
you know, punishment and torture. And then later on moved to Osaka Central mm. and restricted uh, people from visiting me. I don't know how they expected me to survive. But by God's grace, we are here. Mm. And uh, allow me to take this opportunity to also um, express uh, a message of goodwill and prayer towards um, Honorable GBM, who is equally a victim of uh, political persecution by the European government. And uh, he also, like many, suffered the fate of having to be sent to jail. Uh, and now his health is failing. Um, he was visited today by some of our colleagues because we got information that uh, he was unwell. Uh, the uh, correctional, you know, service, you know, officers uh, could not permit them to see him because they didn't even have the capacity or strength to be able to walk or move to the visitor's uh, bay. Mm. Of course, we are hearing rumors of the fact that the federal government refused for him to go for specialist treatment. Uh, they want him to go into some public facility. Uh, and uh, we just pray that his life is, you know, will be preserved. Mm. Uh, but we know the colleagues that are in government, they are sadists who basically they would even wish the worst to happen to those they consider to be their political opponents, political enemies, whatever they describe. But you know, all of us as Zambians are desiring to contribute a bit we can to improve the welfare of all of us, including those that may not be in the same political 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 party or you know are affiliates to any political party. At the end of the day, we're all Zambians. We compete in terms of ideas, we compete in terms of what we think would, the best, would be the best approach to move this country forward. But uh, the attitude and what the UPND have exhibited in terms of being, you know, vindictive, uh, you know, undertaking, you know, retribution and uh, basically which, you know, undertaking, you know, a crusade of uh, or a witch hunt uh, towards those that uh, think uh, their opponents is really beyond what anybody can ever imagine or ever think it will happen in our lifetime mm. and in this generation. For argument's sake, um, Honorable SG, when you, when you look at all these arrests uh, that, of course, have followed you, the people in power, a few years ago, the party front, a number of leaders that have been arrested, others have been jailed as we speak right now, don't you think that? This must be a point of return or perhaps a point of re uh, reflection to reflect back and say perhaps maybe you are paying for your evil that you might have committed while it's in power. Why should we be witnessing all these arrests and others being convicted as we speak today? Don't you think maybe you, you did evil or did damage to this country? Okay, let's take KGBM for example. Mm. He's been a businessman all his life. Zambia knows that. The only sin the man committed was to have ventured into politics and was privileged to be in government and served as defense minister. Mm. At the time that he was defense minister, there were all kinds of propaganda stories against him as it, and his business which business was not established at the time that was in government but established way many years before he even got into government and we also operate in zambia under the principle of the fact that uh, when you register a legal entity like a company it assumes its own personality okay yes you may have shares you may have interest in a company but a company has its own personality so if one of the directors or indeed shareholders or anybody decides at personal level to venture into politics they don't drag that company into that into their politics um, and if they in this case uh, continue to do business and if they were engaged in business government or anything like that um, don't expect that then you you commingle 
uh, the personality or character of the company with that of an individual who is in, in, in government. Uh, but when you look at the parameters that were used for him to be convicted, he's basically wanting to suggest that uh, the fact that he got into politics and was in government, he stopped being in government. I mean, he stopped being a businessman. We have not had any law after 1990 that forbids any citizen from engaging in business. Even civil servants are permitted to engage in business. Of course, there are ethical uh, issues that arise for you to be able not to abuse your exactly. government and moral, issues, and moral well. issues and so on. But uh, insofar as uh, a formal business, a company and so on, mm -hmm. is supposed to run as an entity. So that's one issue that I would leave for the Zambian people to be able to examine. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Uh, uh, I'm facing issues to do with exposing governments, for example, interference with the judiciary. Mm -hmm. When you look at at the time that we started pointing out the fact that the judiciary is under risk, mm -hmm. and today, I think the Zambian people have seen that maybe um, we as whistleblowers were not really taken seriously at the, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But what is happening to the judiciary today, everybody is concerned. I was privileged uh, yesterday yeah. to have um, escorted His Excellency the 60th President Dr. Edgar Chagalungu to the American Day or uh, to witness obviously mm -hmm. the election process that is, uh, is underway in uh, the U.S. Um, and uh, uh, the, His Excellency Ambassador to you know, Disney to Zambia from the U.S. You know, expressed himself yesterday. And in talking about the democratic processes in America and what was going on, he also spoke to the fact that having, you know, some of the critical partners of Zambia, they are concerned that the same way obviously is expected that the institutions of government are protected and are left to operate professionally and independent of the influence of whether the executive politicians or anybody, it is expected also in Zambia. And one of the critical institutions that he talked about is the judiciary. And uh, obviously, we will not be discussing and raising concern if there's nothing wrong with the way the judiciary in this country is operating. Mm. Um, other people, commentators, have said that if you have um, in your country or jurisdiction a situation where the police are being abused by politicians who are in government, and then the judiciary too, and the other institutions related to the justice system are being abused. It means that now we are going to promote a situation where the corrupt, those who are involved in fraud and criminal activities, will be protected by the judiciary because they are using the judiciary to cover themselves. They will be protected by the police because they are using the police to cover themselves. And those who are courageous to speak against their ills will suffer the fate of being arrested and imprisoned because the police, the judiciary, everybody is being abused to advance or aid the agenda of those who are in government. That's what's happening in this country. Today is very, it's predictable when um, uh, you know when a, a, a PF member is arrested, you know that, and those who are critical to this government, when they are arrested, you know they will be presented to a particular court in the sub-court. You know that when their matter goes to the high court, there is a system, for example, in Lusaka that guarantees that when a matter that involves patriotic front and other opposition political parties to move to a part, certain you know, named judges who, when that matter goes, you even know the outcome. The predictability of the outcome of these cases are on the basis that you know these are inclined towards the advancing the agenda of those who are in government today, the UPND. Mm. And that is very sad because I must say the reason why we are some of us are passionate speaking against the idea of interfering with the judiciary is that the judiciary is a sacred entity of any society or any nation to which every citizen is supposed to have confidence that when they go there, justice is guaranteed. Hmm. The moment that is lost, 
it is now survival of the fittest survival of the strongest so you are pushing citizens to get into the street to sort out their issues because when they go to court they know they will not get anything i have to go and fight my way for to guarantee that my children who an opportunity to still participate either in the economy or the governance of this country or indeed have some space to do whatever they want in their own country. That's not the route we're supposed to go. Systems themselves should be able to guarantee that. Institutions of government should be able to guarantee that. And that is what basically we should be advocating for. So um, when you look at PF, Boma Nusambo today uh, was um, not only sentenced, uh, when there was an application, which is supposed to be a straightforward uh, application, uh, we have a judicial system that guarantees or gives every citizen an opportunity, if they are not satisfied with the decision of the court, to go to higher court. And we operate under the constitution, uh, is it Article 8, that guarantees that uh, every human being must be deemed innocent until proven guilty. So when you go before the sub-court and they make a decision and you decide, I'm not satisfied, I have appealed, the, that appeal in itself, that notice of appeal in itself, should be able to bring you back to the status of the fact that you are innocent until you proven what? Guilty. Guilty because you are going to a higher court. Why should it be that the judicial system seems to suggest that uh, you don't have the right to argue your case, whether in the subordinate court or going Now we are having sub lower courts refusing to have people to go to higher court. Even when it comes to matters, for example, that do not border on taking people's liberties away. We had the Mama Esther Lungu's case, where, first of all, before the High Court, she was denied to cross-examine witnesses. She was denied to bring other witnesses to come and testify. And then a verdict is, you know, you know, meted out. And then she's denied an opportunity for her to appeal or be heard. She had to go to the Court of Appeal to actually seek that the High Court be ordered for them to have this matter heard fair. That is exposing the the very ills that we are talking about. And therefore, my appeal this evening will be to all of us Zambians, because the people that are in the judiciary come from our, uh, you know, from us within our society. Those who are in the police, those who are in all these institutions. Is it uh, a reflection of who we are? Cowards, those who are timid, who cannot stand up and stick to principle and professional regardless of the attempts by others to interfere who are the you know men and women noble men and women in the judiciary in the police in all these institutions who can say I would rather keep a good name and maintain my integrity than succumb to the interference of politicians and those who are elites who may not tomorrow be able to you know be stand with me as I account for the, the misdeeds and things that I may have done influence by them but I had the opportunity to make a judgment or decision whether I can go by their suggestion or not mm -hmm. there must be nobility there must be people who are in the judiciary whose pride lies in the fact that they have executed their duty professionally observing all ethics and they have meted out justice not because it was suggested or influenced by anybody but because they have adhered to the law those men and women are the ones we are seeking and looking for at this time and mm -hmm. such a time as this when we have a dictator in state house and a UPND that is incorrigible whose view that they cannot convince the Zambian people to continue voting for them or to uh, to have them continue in government without playing what they are calling Mingarot. And if such pronouncements are coming from the highest office of the land, that Mingarot basically means dribbling, using dubious means to be able to advance your interests. The president has said you used Mingarot against the opposition. What has been the Mingarot? interfering with the operation of the opposition political party, sponsoring a splinter group, having people through the you know, shenanigans of the police and everybody to try and stage a coup, staged and supported and sponsored by the state themselves, having the police to protect and get people to undertake a fraudulent or criminal enterprise with their protection. 
the ones who are supposed to arise. This is a very sad state, uh, you know, state of affairs in the Republic of Zambia. In, in 60 years down the line, we are not expected to degenerate to these levels. It was expected that 60 years after independence would have refined our Ghana system, would have actually refined and polished our politics and democracy so that we become a shining star, having been a pioneer from 1964. We were pioneers in being in the front, in among the frontline states in terms of fighting for the liberation of the continent. Dr. Kaunda was one of the highly respected statesmen on the continent because of the role he played in the liberation struggle. Dr. Chiruba and his team were, you know, pioneers of the reintroduction of democracy on the continent. I mean, when it comes to the economic structure of this, you know, of our country, we became a model on many fronts. Ask Venon Mwanga how many countries uh, he has been privileged to be requested as, as a resource person to structure governance institutions. Uh, Arabi at some point was even more or less uh, you know, seconded to, by the UN to actually be an interim leader of Namibia because of the fact that Zambia was a shining star in the Sadiq region and on the continent of Africa. Today we are laughing stock mm -hmm. and you and me must be concerned and those who are watching us this particular evening. There is a perception and a different view, Honorable SG, um, where the, the, the system or perhaps those in power, the, or those who are, who are in the ruling party, are, are accusing you or perceiving you to be, uh, you know, to, have, to be taking or rather to be antagonistic to the governments in your quest to offer checks and balances. Uh, and people say, look, you can still offer your checks and balances, but in a sober manner, in a very professional manner, in a, you know, a, 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 an approach which will be acceptable, not the approach where you are being antagonistic, you, in particular as SG Nagachin, and also the PF in general. Hence, what? a number of you have blooded yourself, for example, in police cells. What have we done wrong? What is wrong about telling Mr. Kainde to stop what he's doing that is affecting the Zambian people negatively? By calling President Akende as a dictator, yes. that we have a dictator in, in set house. That's so my, you think that's, that's being antagonistic? How can it be antagonistic when in fact that is my view? When I look at his style of governance and what he has done so far, my opinion is that he's a dictator. A democrat doesn't do what he does. A Democrat can't pass a statutory instrument to have the police and all other law enforcement agencies to be under his direct control. And therefore, the wake of the police you know, raiding homes and uh, going to seize properties without even investigations of people just because they were PF and they were in PF government. And all this uh, that people have suffered under the UPND, it's only a dictator who can do that. A Democrat allows institutions of government, law enforcement agencies to operate at least you know, as aut autonomous organizations or institutions. If that's not the case, actually the greatest of all should be independent institutions without interference. They should be able to investigate at their own volition. They should be able to, able to initiate investigations, arrests and so on, not instructed, not directed, that, oh, Nakachinda, look at what he has spoken, I don't like it. You have a president who's so emotional that when you call him out, he instructs the police to arrest. That's childish. That's uh, having a leader who has no spine, who has uh, a spaghetti spine. Mwanawasa had to whip himself and end up pro pronouncing under the vicious, uh, uh, critical, op you know, effective opposition leader in Michael Sad. He said to the Zambian people, I am not cabbage, I am steak. I have a thick skin. I can contend and withstand no, all manner of criticism, but I'll focus on delivering for Zambian people. This government, this government, particularly their leader, is weak, is emotional. That's why for three years he has only been preaching one message. PF Edgarungu. PF Edgarungu. PF Edgarungu. You ask him, you told us that you know the dollar, I uh, mean Kwacha will gain strength the moment you are sown in at 10, 14 hours, says Edgar. Uh, and the UPND. 
it has become a national anthem and you know the way we operate in Zambia is that because we run a presidential system what the president says becomes police so everybody else behave like they are zombies they even know that what the president is saying is not correct but they will repeat it look at how Madam Nanumango a reverend somebody who is seasoned she was in parliament for of two terms minister uh, uh, for information and other portfolio she held she was even deputy speaker she has immense you know experience but because she is serving under a president who is so weak so unstable without any focus she is made like she doesn't think she answers on on a friday is a circus actually the moment they start the um, friday you know vice president question i switch off the tv because i can't withstand seeing a mother a reverend embarrassing herself like that I know no one can ever manage to uh, can manage the dora the i mean the exchange rate where was she getting that notion from they came into government on the premise that they will be able to manage the exchange rate. Their president was even saying it is abominable to have the kwacha against the dollar go to the extent of being in the you know 15, 16 up to the 20, you know uh, 20 to a dollar. That's what you're saying, and he says when I come, just by virtue of the confidence that people who have in my presidents, it will reduce to less than 10 kwacha between 10 and 14 hours when you hold this president to that standard he set for himself you have committed an offense you have to be arrested he says that you're going to you cause committed him committing himself to a rule of law how can you say the rule of law we have for example a council chairman chairperson who was you know arrested and convicted in Kawamba. He has appealed. He went to court and obtained you know is he has applied for bail. But he also went to court and obtained a stay that ECZ does not proceed to have a by election in because still representing the people of Kawamba. They ignore the stay you know the decisions of the High Court they decide to proceed to have an illegal election in Kawamba. And you say that you believe in the rule of law? I mean, that is, uh, who are you cheating? Who are you trying to really, is there, they think like, you know, uh, Zambians are, are just uh, zombies, they can't think, they can't process. The only thing I know about Zambians is that they wait for you. And the time will come when Zambians will show the UPND their real position and feeling over the abuses they have subjected Zambian people so far in three years. We have a government in place uh, which seems to be very determined and very, I know, um, solid in what they do. And uh, President Akende Shema is actually advised his uh, uh, lieutenants that uh, you have to be strong regardless of the criticism that you're going to face along the way. Uh, people are going to mock you but we have to remain resolute to what we do because we are here to work on behalf and to the benefits of the people of Zambia by ensuring that the rule of law is maintained or restored as well as uh, eventually or in return develop people I mean uh, improve the cost of living when we hear those sentiments and uh, the solidness of the UPND and President Akendeshe and his regime what comes to your mind? As a party front. What comes in our mind as PF and what comes in my mind as an individual, mm -hmm. going by the nomenclatures you have used, is that first of all, UPND is solid in wrongdoing and determined in doing and occasioning harm to Zambian people. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to describe UPND as a solid government, they are only solid in wrongdoing. They are only determined in doing wrong. Nothing else. Even when Mr. Akainde Ichirema has been embarrassed by his you know, interference in PF, imposing Mao Sampa as a leader, and as it were, he has been exposed to the Zambian people, he has publicly gone with Chaming and others to try and pronounce them as leaders of PF. Without any shame, in one breath you'll be denying, in another breath encouraging the same. The police, People like Jack Mwimbo have reduced all the respect that Jack Mwimbo people had for him when he was the leader of opposition and also a member of parliament for the 20 years now he's going to run five years. 
has been rubbished because the guy doesn't even behave like he is a lawyer. He can't even oppose or guide his president that what you are asking me to do, you can never do. We are having, you know, suggestions and reports suggesting that him and his peers, uh, Mr. M is it Mata Mutambo or somebody, yeah. uh, they are sitting, you know, at home affairs to try and interfere with the registers of political parties. Home affairs minister. If those rumors are true, people would say that, uh, you know, this country has gone to the dogs. And maybe we should change the dogs have come to the country because really you don't expect a government that believes the rule of law to undertake such activities because that is criminal you understand but Mr. Haka in nature is exactly proud of that he would even carry MPs and uh, uh, we had uh, an embarrassing situation in northwestern province where he carried uh, some fellow from Chadiza, this Jonathan Daka, uh, to, with him to northwestern. He's telling his ADC, tell him to introduce himself as vice president of PF. Are you sure uh, APS, uh, IP, I almost called you IPS, or no, IP. You were seated here, when you close eye, your eyes, you can actually be convinced or convicted that uh, there is any person by the name of Jonathan Daka who is Vice President of PF. How did he become Vice President of PF? That is basically an, uh, a, 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 a president who, in, they say, Ali Shetan Sony. He can do such a terrible, embarrassing thing in the full view of cameras. You know what he, he did? His ABC goes to tell Jonathan. I think he didn't hear the instruction properly. Jonathan continues to talk. The president is not satisfied. He steps down and tells the ABC, tell him to introduce himself as vice president. She, even Mingarato herself, he doesn't know. Cheap village Mingarato. You are thinking like you are actually in a village where you, he's not even sophisticated. And people actually lie to him. Because every attempt to do what he wants to do is exposed because of the fact that he's such a cheap, these UPND people are just a cheap group of people who are determined to stay in power, but they don't even have the tact of winning the Zambian people on their side. And how do you intend to, I mean, uh, survive as a party friend with all these things happening in your party? Um, whether this the, the scenario given happened or not, but uh, let's look at your some of the members of parliament. We have seen them, you know, getting along with the president, interacting with the president, and there are reasons maybe justifiable because they are saying, look, when you are a member of parliament under the opposition political party or under an opposition political party, you are not an enemy of the government or the president. So basically, it's not about the president or President Agende Shema uh, carrying them or, or parading them. They are willingly going or traveling with the president for the sake of peace, unity, and also working together for the people of Zambia and not a party, no. not PF. Of course, there are some we have tried to talk to. Yeah. Uh, some members of parliament I don't want to mention. We have tried to, to, to challenge them. What is this nonsense you are doing? They have some of us, some of them have been courageous to say, no, no, we have seen that this government is uh, uh, determined to try and destroy our party. So the strategy they have chosen, though some of it is not approved by the party, is to go and, uh, uh, like they say in other areas, Kuya Baby Raman, get closer to your enemy, know what their schemes are and what they are planning, so that you can then find a way in which you can defend yourselves. So as far as we are concerned as a party, um, wow, uh, we have told some of them it's not necessary, uh, but others feel that, I mean, enough is enough. So to angry that to eat, to bombe to be closed to be So we are just laughing, uh, some, you know, uh, around the, the fact that uh, there are others who have decided to deploy, don't go ever. Get close, learn what they are doing, and come back. Will the PF survive, really? Because time is running out. <laughs> Let me tell you. A year plus the, before, the, the, your house is not getting old. No. I, I ask you a question, SG. I don't know if you are going to answer me or you'll be able to candidly answer what have you done in the last three years in 
putting your political party together we your have party we have to be dismantled we have never lost focus right that uh, there are certificates that uh, we g obtain from the rest of society right. that uh, give us a name but ultimately the ideals and policies of uh, Patriotic Front have been effectively sold, sold out to the Zambian people. Mm. And the real PF is the people of Zambia. So the real opposition for UPND is not the Register of Society certificates. If that's why you focus, you have lost the, the plot. Mm. For us, we are moving with the Zambian people. And I can tell you, um, an experienced young politician that UPND has been falling in the PF trap every other day. All we need is to provoke them by, for example, telling them that uh, Edgar Chagwalungu is going to donate at Yunza. The entire police service will be shift, will shift at Yunza. They fall in our trap. We have used the UPND emotional decisions to take the police to Yunza, to interact with the students. By the time they finish, after three, four days of camping there, the students are irritated and they're calling us. What is this nonsense? You mean Edgar can't come even donate some more? So no, Edgar now I'm can you go back up to There's a memorial service of a former president, and we decide we're going to worship. It's our right and freedom of choice of assembly where we want to go and watch you can't stop people if i decide to celebrate the memory of my father and a tree you see in our village or memorial whatever you can call it i can do it under a tree i can do it in whatever style i want the government cannot stop me and friends and colleagues and those who work, worked with Mr. Sata decided he was a Catholic, therefore we're going to worship at the Catholic Church. We knew that uh, the way we know how kind of is going to send the police. What happened that morning? <laughs> the cathedral of the child, child Jesus was flooded with the police. When we were going there, we were smiling. And I can tell you Mr. Samba is a perfect candidate to campaign for us. Mm. Mr. Mzamba, he's a man. He's a good campaign manager. I don't need to go anywhere as SD to campaign. All I need is to press one or two buttons. He will be everywhere in town campaigning for us. So Lusaka town will have taken over because all we do is to announce that we have a press briefing, for example, at the Secretariat. There will be tankers there. Do you know who is irritated and inconvenienced? The people are coming from you know, compounds who are suffering and trying just to make ends meet. They just want to go and you know, get a, a, do a little transaction, maybe 50 kwacha for them to buy a Pamela. They find tankers and tear gases sometimes thrown around. Because the PF, they decided they're going to have a press briefing at their own office. So, Ms. Aka in the and Mr. Musamba are good tools. And uh, I, I thank God for President Edgar Chagarung because he is so smart that he, he is playing his politics without even moving. He is deploying the police and others to go and campaign for him. When he says, I'm going to church, the police come and they irritate everybody in, in, the poli in, the, in church by wanting to stop him from going to church. We're having a press briefing tomorrow. Everybody has already been trying to do, you know, what should we do to stop this? They have gone to the lodge where we are. there's a press briefing that has to do with uh, you know, the launch or announcement of tones and so on. They want to intimidate the owner of the lodge. Are you telling me that the owner of the lodge who supportive to this government having been uh, for just a simple business of hosting a press briefing and even tomorrow they will fall into the trap they may send the police and will be glad to come and interact with the police it will continue showing to the Zambian people how brutal this government is hmm. let's imagine if elections are called today Let, let's just 
assume we are we have a general election tomorrow and um, you as a as a public front you have to contest what, what, what will you do don't worry the because the that vehicle here it seems to be divided no no no, like, no 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 it's, it's like natural uh, open pf uh, anyone can wake up ip can wake uh, up to tomorrow and say i'm a president of the pf no 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 uh, and the narrative will go on like that no mwisho uh, ba ip tule kwa ko serious eh na tukara mono mustu de tamkweta malight ama yako ni enu tare bomba tulikuwa tuli mu 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 hit up they sweating up but i'm still just uh, you know trying to advance the argument for some people to hear but we, we are suffering the anguish i am convinced that after one hour of interviewing me under this environment and this heat i don't think you are going to be going home proudly saying you are going to vote for upnd the heat you are feeling here can't compare to the heat the zambian people are experiencing and suffering out there okay so for us we would rather be on the side of the zambian people but in terms of the strategy around the vehicle don't worry about that right mr aka in the hrm we will take him on and very soon we'll be taking him to the cleaners it's only uh, a people are not strategic that discuss everything in public when you when pf decides to issue a statement decides to send something on the blogs it's calculated and the upnd have perfectly fallen into the trap because they react to everything on social media hmm. let's talk about uh, the u.s elections um we, we followed this you no know, interesting debate and activities in usa where joe biden i mean donald trump i don't know i keep on mentioning joe biden donald trump uh, when he announced his uh, comeback it sounded like it was it was a taboo it was it was a joke he ran with it and uh, the, the system tried to stop him from contesting uh, you know the elections but eventually he pushed himself further uh, on the ballot as we speak today the man has been declared as a winner or the 47th president of uh, usa what does it mean to you as a people the front and uh, the opposition in zambia or perhaps in african channel let, let me, i think you're saying you're using long terminologies mm -hmm. he pushed himself mm -hmm. no right. it's the people of the united states of america that pushed him right they demanded for him mm -hmm. they supported him the system the democrats attempted not only to block him through judicial war, lawfare mm -hmm. they also attempted through what we witnessed you know to eliminate him uh, attempted the assassins mm. uh, is it two three four times yeah. three times three times one where he was physically harmed others were obviously before any uh, fatal action was taken they were prevented okay that's what happens when a government is desperate okay so for us First of all, we congratulate Dr. I mean uh, Donald Trump, right. um, and you've noticed that Africa has celebrated his uh, victory. Hmm. Why? Should Pu it be so? Purely because of two things, right. or three things. One, Donald Trump, when he he was president, he made it very clear that he didn't want to interfere in the internal affairs of other countries, and when he came to Africa, he said the heavy-handedness of the west particularly america in determining you know not only policy but the governance processes including elections and so on he will not tolerate that let africa deal with his problems actually he was even saying this tube or bottle you have been feeding from uh from america of aid and so on has spoiled you people you have been africa you can actually self-determine in terms of the economy and other things so i'm going to pull it off let that man the welfare of americans also find your own resources you, he said that in many ways than one at some point he, he even used crude words which people cried about but in principle you're saying can 
can you as Africans wake up, use your resources, work your competent you know, citizens now in view of the fact that you have been able to educate the citizenry, you have some of the brilliant engineers on the globe. Do you know that the, the health sector in the US is run by Africans? Most of the doctors, nurses, and all these who provide health services, most of them are Africans. Even the, the, the financial sector, now you are having the Africans being more dominant. And all that, mining and otherwise, we have actually we have exported more human resources out there who are running big entities, but they are not utilized on the continent. They are not utilized in Zambia. We should be ashamed of ourselves. Therefore, because of that uh, progressive policy that seems to be painful at temporarily at the initial stage, some of us believe that Trump is the right man to be in such a very powerful global office of uh, White House or over office. Mm. Two, for Africans, there are certain values and, and, uh, and uh, cultural norms that are difficult to compromise. For Zambia, which is even declared a Christian nation, mm. to ever think that somebody would wake up from somewhere and try and impose on us alien, you know, uh, abominable values like LGBT rights and all that, that the Democrats through this was trying to advance. When she visited Africa, you heard what she said when she was in Ghana. You heard what she said when she was in Tanzania. You heard her attempts to try and make pronouncements here in Zambia over LGBT. For the first time after she visited, this government had the police escort and protect a procession of those who are advocating for LGBT with their flags. It has never happened on the soils of this country. It's abominable. And some of us believe that maybe that's how come things are so tough for this government because they are pretending they associated with the organizations like the Foundation for the Soros who are clearly advancing these values. Misaka and the government have proudly associated with this. At the State House now, we have the Tony Blair Foundation having very serious interaction and actually a unit, policy unit that is actually there. But Tony Blair is an ambassador of what? LGBT things. We have ended up entangling ourselves in abominable you know, alliances and associations. A country that has covenanted with God. When I saw in the HLM, uh, in his speech attempting to present himself like he's praying, God, you know that we're just agents, give us rain, and so on. Even the demeanor itself didn't demonstrate that this is a man with the a, a sense of reverence towards God that he could actually present a petition in that manner. At the platform itself was wrong. It's an, an hypocritical way of wanting to present the needs of the Zambian people before God that is so sovereign. And uh, uh, let's not joke around such things. These are people who were lambasting President Lungu for declaring a day of national prayer reconciliation, you know, uh, and you know, forgiveness. This is these are people who are lambasting President Lungu for actually attempting to build a, the house of God as a symbol of our reverence and appreciation that God rules in the affairs of men. They were debating on the floor of parliament, mocking the day, mocking all these attempts. Now they are stuck. That's when they want to actually go to God and say, can you help us? But what is even more <laughs> revealing about the hypocrisy of these people? Two days after President HH was trying to pray on that day when they were assigned that useless... Are you saying he was trying to pray? Yes, or trying to pray. Well, he was trying to pray because I think it was just an afterthought during his speech that let me say something that to, to try and impress people. Because if it was a prayer, 
and he really respects the, his communion with God. It would have been in an appropriate manner, in an appropriate stage. It should have been intentional. It can't be flip flopping. And because it was flip flopping, a, a Nijek, uh, you know, um, attempts to engage God. He also attempted to engage other gods. When he went to a traditional ceremony and says, you chiefs used to have powers to call rains. Can you call rains? So we don't know whether he wants the traditional powers or he wants God's power to be in this Republic of Zambia. But that's what happens when you are not focused and you don't know where you stand. You can't define what your conviction is, whether you are a Christian or not. And that's how come possibly we need to examine these things. I don't want to start you know, pitching in any way in terms of examining his faith because ultimately Jesus is not a crowd saver, he's a personal savior. Mm. So it's up to him, but we can only judge and know him by the fruits mm. and the fruits are seen in what he says and his actions his level of vengeance his level of retribution his level of vindictiveness doesn't speak to some of the things he professes mm. you know and uh, possibly that's where we are that come where, where we are joe biden and his administration um rules or ruled um America for a single term mm. something that is seems to be quite uh, you know becoming so familiar in so many countries uh, today including back home in Africa w w what is the reason why we see this uh, regime change within a term a leader is uh, sent packing you see the, there is a, an awakening globally young people citizens we are in an era where information is flying you know, at supersonic speed. And those of us who are seeking for office through democratic means must know that we have to up the game. They up the game in the sense that, uh, first of all, you must know that you're under the spotlight. There's nothing you can hide. The only way, currency for you to succeed in your political career is to be transparent and be honest. When you can't do something, just tell them. Don't try and say to the citizens that you are Superman, you are going to solve all this, and soon you'll be found out. The days of the Kaundas who would organize people by Chisokone, 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 and people just remain impressed are long gone. Because when you are doing Chisokone, Chisokone, some young kid is on the WhatsApp, is on Instagram, is on you know X and all these social platforms and discover that that nonsense called Chisokone is an abuse. That is not permissible in a democratic society. <laughs> so to that effect, <laughs> Mr. Kainde's uh, uh, approach to governance and politics is a cake. It can't work today. It used to work in Kaunda, but he used to admire as politics uh, that he wants to implement them today. He doesn't realize that having students on a Saturday in Copper Belt, you go and organize pupils to come and receive you at a function, it's an abuse. It may have worked in Kaunda days when we were growing up. We are all called, come to school, Dr. Kaunda is coming. It was such a great privilege to see that white handkerchief. We were hypnotized by that because we are not exposed to any information. That time there was no television. You understand what I'm saying? TV, Mulani Mamino Munkara, maybe Kulchabi Wabiri Wana Mativi. Elo TV is a soccer for 16 hours. Bavara for 21 hours. It's just 16 hours in Kakwana. I'm going to pump out to my TV for a neighbor. You have to go and bath first. So if you are a bit lazy around the water, you will not end up having the privilege to watch the revision. But today, TV is 24 hours. And those days, there was only one channel. Today, there are 500 channels, 800 channels. You understand what I'm saying? You are getting information from everywhere depending on what you are interested to know and learn. There are channels that are educative, that are informative, that do research on your behalf. The phones we use today, you can get any information at any given time. So people who are dealing with information at their fingertip, you can't handle them the way you are handling my grandfather, who only was tuning to Radio 1. And the Radio 1 news was coming maybe twice a day. 
And even that news was only Kaunda has done this, Kaunda has done this. And after that, Fiabukai, after Fiabukai, is another joke, another joke. And that's all we are leaning, listening to stories on, in oral teachings, you know, through stories and Utushim. That was what was on radio. But today, how many radio stations we have? We have numerous community radio stations. And even if you don't give licenses nowadays, people can have a radio and a studio and be able to broadcast on Facebook. So, this Misaka in nature of my brother goes, a Jija Guti Niza, Jamu Jamu Erensiki, Jam Muriba Gaunda, and Gataji Vereke Sunomodara, come out of that uh, primitive way of handling you know, governance issues and politics because you are imbalanced each and every day. Because sometimes you even wonder when the president speaks, is there anybody who is there to you know, you know, advise this president? You go and speak. If you are speaking during Kaunda days, you are in Wengwa or you are in Galomo or you are in Choma or anywhere in a traditional ceremony and you go and speak, it will remain in your village. But today it can't. Now people are asking in Rundas, Benda Mata Konichani guys. Ziriwuri Zamina Aru Nankula Monto. You understand what I'm saying? And then people begin to say, but what kind of insult is this? But maybe within the confines of your village, they may understand you. But actually, you know that some of those sayings emanate from stories and, and uh, adages that spoke to the greediness of parents and other people those days. There is a saying that when you say Benda Matago indeed that Tata Uriatwe, it's a story in a book that talks of a greedy father who went hunting during a hunger disaster like ours. But because he can't share what he he has caught in the in his hunting uh, ex expedition he ties some stake uh, you know on his waist so when he's talking to his children he tell them uh, if you want to eat something benda matago cuts part of your you know skin mm -hmm. and eat then when they try to cut of course because it's painful they can't then he himself goes and cuts that piece of meat which has tied in his and eats it speaks to greediness <laughs> That metaphor is a wrong, misplaced, you know, metaphor. But as it were, because somebody is not thinking, they just speak, and they don't understand that today information flies faster than anything. So anyway, um, as far as we are concerned, we are marching with the Zambian people steadily, hmm. and uh, we will not disappoint the Zambian people. I, 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 Everything has been properly considered, calculated. We know the Mingarat of UPND, hmm. and we know where they are going, what they are attempting to do with everybody they have employed, and they want to deploy to destroy PF. We have read their script back and top and bottom. Mm. And we are determined to make sure that within the Mingra to their plane, we will play super political you know, um, moves that will get the Zambian people's aspirations and desires not be betrayed in 2026. We had the elections in Botswana as well, where uh, Masisi just lost the election uh, you know, terribly lost, I should make mention. There was a dismal performance that uh, he puts up on this political party which had stayed in power for uh, 58 years from the time of independence only to be uh, defeated now and they came out fourth. Why is the... Let's look at also, I'll combine this question with the Joe Biden, the appetite by the electorate worldwide, it appears why should they go and recall a former head of state to come back to state or White House rather, unlike maybe going for a new political party in this regard? Why should we be back, going back and forth? I'm asking this question because the same agenda which the, uh, the party front is also championing to have ECL again away the depot. Mm -hmm. You know, why, why should it be like that? Why no, can't we the, try other leaders, uh, man, or other people? Uh, the rapport agenda has mm -hmm. been. Uh, and the wind of Arabia Rapa has been uh, blowing across the globe. We started with Brazil and other exactly. countries and, mm. and the other countries emulated. Mm. And now <laughs> we had a similar situation, for example, in Botswana. Mm. Because victory, basically the victory 
in Botswana is uh, Ian Kama's victory. Mm. You know, he decided to have, uh, you know, Duma as one of his uh, guys that to support. Yeah. Of course, because they attempted, you know, to block Ian Kama and all those things. He had saved all his terms. You know, I think he was not even eligible to stand, but he found, you know, young people that he could support. Mm. Um, that wind has blown in one of the biggest democracies that has um, remained more or less like a model. Mm. I think uh, this only happened according to what we're getting about 135 years ago or 33 years ago, uh, where a president lost and then later on re-elected. Uh, so Donald Trump has broken record and we think that uh, in Zambia uh, we actually are going to break record uh, of having a former ruling party bounce back. Uh, it, we are very convinced that it will bring maturity and sanity in our democracy because optimistic politics will come to an end. Mm. Uh, a, a Donald Trump's uh, victory uh, speaks to many positive things. Uh, I know there are people who want to zero in and start examining his in temp temperaments and so on. That's secondary. I mean, these are peripheral issues. The real issue is examine his policy position and what has been consistent about. Mm. And he strikes uh, most of us like a person who has a dual personality. He has this loud side of him, mm. but he's a man of faith. He seems to really anchor his uh, discourse publicly on the values of uh, Christianity. And for Zambia and I think many African countries who uh, are quite religious and, and uh, have their, uh, their um, reverence towards God, believe that uh, this uh, gentleman uh, would be a good catalyst mm. to allow Africans express themselves you know, with their religious way of approaching things, mm. would express themselves and be able to have their, you know, uh, potential unlocked. And then this will lead to, I think, uh, a greater, you know, form of success mm. economically, uh, improvement of people's welfare, you know, cleaning up the governance system of our respective countries so that our democracy begin to thrive. Uh, and uh, because there's no interference, we think that uh, would be able to utilize even our own resources, you know, effectively. Um, we think that uh, with his approach to things of what he has pronounced and, you know, promised, we will be able to see the Russia-Ukraine war, you know, um, come to an end. We expect that the Gaza challenge there will come to an end because I think his approach is more practical than anything else. The Joe Biden's were talking of wanting to intervene in the Russia Ukraine war, but they were the ones fearing the war by sponsoring one of the, you know, the, the warring parties. Uh, and uh, NATO was actually the cause for which that war started because of the proximity to Russia and obviously threatening the sovereignty of Russia and its military um, and security, you know, uh, measures that were placed. So Ukraine was just a victim mm. and is being used by the support of the U.S. to continue looking like they can fight and so on. But that fight is really not even a Ukraine fight. Mm. It's a fight, you know, Russia against NATO, but using a conduit, in this case, Ukraine. We think that uh, that's in practical terms. Mm. We think that I think Donald Trump will be more practical. Looking at even the message that came from Zelensky uh, prior to the election and now that which has come after the election, it shows that uh, um, we may not see that war continue for a longer period of time. Unless he was like Misaka in Dechrema, who made one promise and came and did something opposite. Mm. But we're confident that I think he'll be able to follow through because he's, he's quite a you know, tenacious leader, determined leader, looking at how against all odds he was able to fight and wage a, an effective campaign and he has you know, gone back to the over office. Mm. Let's speak to the political activities that will be happening tomorrow as we wind up the program uh, uh, Honorable SG. Um, I know that uh, Donse will be officially launching uh, you know, um, the, its alliance tomorrow. And um, w what is the position of the Patriotic Front in that regards over these political alliances? I know that um, uh, PF or ECA was part of the uh, is part of the UCA alliance as well. And um, I think some three weeks ago, you held a central committee where you, as a chief executive officer of the PF, 
you gave now you know you you are given a report you know and you produced or re you released uh, some new rules of engagement for any political party that would want to associate with you there are some guidelines in that regard mm. what is the fate of uh, the pf in the uh Oka at this moment i don't think there's any issue uh, of fate of pf mm. in Oka. okay, okay. um mm. uh, let me talk about Tonsa first of yeah. all we we have been you know receiving calls from the zaman people mm -hmm. appreciating the fact that even if we are a very strong opposition political parties right. in view of the facts that can never be disputed mm -hmm. we have 58 members of parliament a few disgruntled who i think along the way will come in line we have over 40 council chairpersons and uh, mayors. We have uh, close to 500 councillors across the country. Okay? We have a membership and structures across the country. There is no other political party that is as big as PF in terms of structure and you know, layout across the country, not even the UPND. The UPND may have come into office because there was this wind and hype and so on, but in terms of structural arrangement and machinery, PF still beats UPND. Because there are areas where UPND doesn't exist, to which PF exists. But we exist in areas where UPND is a stronghold. Is a stronghold. I hope you understand. So, um, the call for a united France front in the opposition is clearly motivated by the fact that the German people don't want to gamble. They want a clear and clean victory in 2026 because they can't stand having UPND continue beyond 2026. Hence our open door policy. There are some political parties that were quick and willing to work with us like uh, those that came and worked with Patoto Front under the UCA umbrella. But as it were Uka and the membership is not enough. You know, we have been approached by others. Uh, I can tell you that uh, we also have been able to approach others in terms of uh, uh, encouraging them to hear what the Zambian people are calling for a united opposition front. Among those that approached us was uh, the Tonse you know alliance uh, platform and at that time when we appro uh, approached us we also as a party going through a process of process of introspection mm -hmm. are we really engaging in a manner that to guarantee success of these alliances we felt that uh, any relationship that is not properly defined mm -hmm. is doomed to fail so the base is that let's retreat and therefore we set up an adult committee to go and interrogate this idea of alliances mm -hmm. in a democratic setup. So they inquired both locally and internationally mm -hmm. and came up with what was the minimum bench, benchmarks, if you like, mm -hmm. uh, eventually to translate it into rules of engagement. And those rules of engagement were shared to all those who cared to listen. And uh, those who are progressive looked at them, interrogated them, and accepted that I think this way we can be able to make progress. And came up with a criteria to which every member, whether political or non-political players, will be able to participate in this movement to help the Zambian people and be able to save them from the turmoil they're going through. Mm -hmm. So as far as PF is concerned, our approach is all-embracing. We are not into the business of wanting to pitch this against the other. Mm -hmm. We are into the business of bringing everybody together. It's not an easy undertaking. We have to be firm, mm -hmm. focused. Sometimes they look like we're a bit rough, but we also engage in diplomatic warfare, negotiating with colleagues, having tough conversations where we ask tough questions to bring each other to reality so that at the end of the day, the question of the desires of the Zambian people to have the UPND leave office in 2026 is answered squarely. This is not child play. Mm. So to that effect, being the largest opposition political party, we are what you may call in Bemba and Koko. We have to bring everybody together. Mm. So we have Uka on this side. 
and uh, for as long as UCA is ready to be progressive in terms of engagement and discussions, we are available. What has been the response from UCA when, uh, when you engage? We have not exhausted that uh, process, but right. uh, we are in a hurry to make sure that everybody comes on board. Mm. Because if, for example, we take long to respond to Tonse, take long to respond to others, mm. um, we may actually be losing an opportunity for everybody, including UCA. How did you find yourselves in UCA in the first place as uh, SG? And later on, you realize that I think we need to put up a roadmap, some you know rules of engagement. No, the, we found our, ourselves in obvious on the principal position mm. that uh, the idea of working together mm. uh, from the demands of the Zambian people is is something that uh, is a must and therefore an opportunity presented itself mm -hmm. and therefore we formed this movement and began a process of refining ourselves mm -hmm. but uh, in that process we noticed that there could be some gaps some of the gaps are emanating from the fact that we went in ourselves mm -hmm. and maybe we didn't really set some benchmarks that would help our colleagues relate with us in a more clear manner without assumptions in short, you went into hook in the first place in a disorganized manner no 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 you are using a wrong term Mm -hmm. uh, you understand what I'm saying? I don't know. You're married? Yes, I am. You, yeah, if um, you're married, of, I don't know how you met your wife. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's clear that possibly you find there are people who fall in love, they meet somebody at the supermarket and so on, buying bread and uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. And you say to each other, hi, hi, I love you, I love you too. Uh, we love each other. Mm -hmm. uh, can we even talk about uh, issues of marriage? And you start dating, going to movies and so on. Then you discover, mm, if we are just going to be going to movies and doing all these things without defining clearly how we're we're going to operate. Uh, let me ask tough questions. Do you go to church? Which, which church do you go to? Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay, I also go to church. Yeah. How many children do you want, to, if you get married, do you want to have? Oh, I mean, maybe three or five. Oh, I think we can have common ground. And begin to define those things. So that even when you're getting married, you are able to achieve some level of compat compatibility for purposes of having that relationship work, work. So there was nothing wrong in us finding common ground in terms of responding to the Zambian people. It's just a process now we're undertaking that is getting us to even define clearly how this very health relationship will even be foster, you know, fostered to a greater height to work to save and meet the interests of the Zambian people. Mm -hmm. We are not in an attitude of wanting to say this one is good, is bad, that's one. Uh, no, 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 no. Everybody else is good provided on that platform we are honest to each other. So at this moment it appears the party front you want to be the main anchor of these alliances. It Whoever is, wants to work with you, in your, according to your statement, yes. they have to agree to the terms and conditions that have been that's, up by the that's the, So oh, you'll be the main vehicle. Everybody should come on board, is it? Well, that is. Or are you willing to compromise? For example, I, if IP has got a political party, mm. then I want to work with you. And then I say, okay, fine. Uh, you as PF, let's work on an equal basis. Listen, um, let's face reality. Yeah. From our findings, there is no alliance that has ever worked without you acknowledging that you need an anchor mm. political party. Right. <clears throat> okay. And in this case, the reality is that Patriotic Front, as it stands today, mm. is the anchor opposition political party. It's a reality. We come to the table mm. with all the things I've talked about. Right. And therefore, when I come to IP, who with good intentions and possibly effective as a person, in his quest to save the Zambian people as a politician, has formed a political party. But the, he still has a, just a political party among a nephew and a few friends and so on and so forth. We, it would be unrealistic to suggest that Mr. I.P. now has become an eco partner, partner with the patriotic front. Mm. Okay? While it's we have to respect and appreciate the input of IP and his political party, they must also accept that we have an anchor political party that will carry us. Because the machinery of this political party is what we're going to depend on for us to be able to be, you know, in, you know effectively contest in the next election. Mm -hmm. election. So those are fundamentals that you can debate. But again, 
it can't be assumed that because you have come and these are realities you have the mindset to appreciate the anchor political party or indeed the anchor political party who have the mindset to appreciate the effective and important role you are playing in this arrangement hence the rules of engagement mm -hmm. to say this is the role you are going to play this is the role this other political party is going to play mm -hmm. but as an anchor political party we are the only ones who have locals to bring everybody together mm -hmm. because as it stands now the most beautiful 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 platform that everybody is uh, roasting for or is it you know yearning for is that of patriotic friend and is that of the fact that we also have a cerebral candidate in edgar jagualong mm. and everybody saying harebo rapo agenda is what the zambian people are singing in the bars in churches in you know uh, in the markets on the streets at the farms and everywhere else in the minds, both formal and informal, everywhere you go, people are saying, Are we mm. And now, even America is singing the same song, Are we mm. Will I be right, or perhaps a viewer out there, will he or she be right to sense some forms of selfishness in you and the party front where these alliances are concerned? In that it appears you just want everything to be about yourselves you know and I'll, I'll tell you one thing it reminds me a story of the UPND and how they started the uh, UPND alliance there were a lot of confusion there was a lot of confusion uh, some people even jumped out of the ship of the UPND alliance one of them was at uh, the NGC under Honorable Shimbakambui at the time which led to the division where Honorable or Pierre Sagafumba remained in the UPND alliance while CK went to the other side because the argument at the time was that we need to find a neutral name for this alliance. You can't take us into the UPND. We, we, we're going to be puppets. We, we, we look like we're parrots by the, uh, of the UPND. And we've got, for example, Sean Temba as well is a, a, a person who stood firm. We said, look, we need to have a neutral name. And UPND was accused that they were being selfish by bringing people or being the main anger, unlike finding a neutral name. Aren't you also exhibiting the same tendency of being selfish? It's like you want everything to be about yourselves, you can't compromise? I don't know what uh, question you are trying to ask. Mm. But first it's of all... about your selfishness no, no, and the, perhaps uh, maybe the perceived uh, I don't know. Hypocrit hypocrisy. Uh, hypocrisy in terms of... In terms of uh, the same things with the UPND, if, if, the same if, character if, put if, up the UPND. Uh, okay. No, no, no. For, Which is what you also try no, to no, portray. No. Don't uh, insult us by comparing us to UPND, please. You know, leave UPND with their, you know, demons on their own. I mean, we have uh, too much to deal with the UPND mm. uh, and looking at even the way they have performed. I think uh, give us a bit of credit in terms of our decency to be honest with the colleagues. Mm. We have not deceived anybody. I've featured on this platform, I've had press briefings, the president has expressed himself from the very day he came back from, act, you know, into active politics. You can go to his speech. There's nothing sinister about our engagement with colleagues. Okay? Even for us to retreat and say, can we have rules of engagement, which we have publicly pronounced. How can that be that you are being selfish? We are telling you, this is how we're going to relate. How can that be selfish? The UPN, you are deceiving friends. We don't practice deceit ourselves. We face each other in our, each other's eyes and say, this is how you are going to relate with me. And, you know, can you tell us whether it is acceptable to you? It's as simple as that. That's how it works, whether it's business, it's politics, it's diplomacy and so on. You must have everything put on the table, defined. Mm -hmm. Then you can be able to bargain. Well, it's again, the Uka, they seem to have their own rules as well. They're saying you can't have a political party which is already in an alliance belonging to another political uh, another alliance that's something so that perhaps uh, how are that's how to handle this issue no 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 we are it's a process mm. uh, in this case why do you want to suggest that pf is the one that is selfish when we are saying let this movement be an all embracing and we're saying if uka has come i mean uka is there and tose has come what is wrong with embracing those why do you want to have a closed shop why do you have to uh, have an exclusive you know club of the few 
when the Zambian people are saying this is a serious matter, we want all of you to work together, mm. get the best human resource from everybody, assemble, have a formidable team, and be able to represent us and possibly have a chance to be able to govern us, uh, govern this country better than what we're experiencing now. Mm. How can it be that we're selfish in wanting to work with everybody? You know, I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a misplaced assertion. Yeah. But I want to tell you a further answer that yeah. we have not insisted. That's how come we are comfortable with the pronouncement of Uka, just like we are comfortable with the pronouncement of Tonsa. Mm -hmm. We have not said say PF. No. We have said, what is it that the Zambian people are demanding for? Mm -hmm. Any uh, platform that speaks to unity, that speaks to people coming together, we will embrace it. Mm -hmm. Tell me something. Mm -hmm. Will um, PF be part of the Tonse launch tomorrow? Uh, yes, yes, yes we will 100% are going will to be ECL be there as well? Wow, ECL is going to be part of the launch. Right. Yeah in one form or the other he will be part of the, the launch of course it's a press briefing mm -hmm. we have speakers that are going to speak at that press, press briefing and as pf are going to participate mm -hmm. you know in terms of uh, endorsing the formation of tonsa and launching tonsa and being able to have all the processes that have been proposed mm -hmm. unveiled to them and people tomorrow and we'll proud, proudly participate and we're doing this in good faith mm -hmm. we're not doing this you know and as an upfront against anybody. No, we're just saying let everybody come on board. And we're saying this to everybody. Mm -hmm. This movement towards 2026 cannot be a, a movement of an exclusive club. No. This movement is for everyone. We are going to utilize every resource, including that of a former president, to bring everybody, including those who may have misunderstood this movement, mm -hmm. will convince them because we think we have superior you know, argument in relation to what is other people are going through and what is needed for us to answer to their needs. So we are not intimidated by misunderstanding and miscon you know, uh, mi you know, perceptions mm -hmm. and people misconstruing this and that around whatever it is. When you are right and you are moving on the right path you are confident that along the way people will come and see that you meant well. If we are peddling deceit, lies and the manipulation and so on maybe we will be afraid of being found out but for as long as it's a sincere movement, an honest movement we are confident that even those who are, speak, who are afraid who are not sure, along the way will discover that we mean well President Rung means well, PF means well, for the sake of the Zambian people. So you don't mind to belong to five, five four alliances? It doesn't matter for We me. don't mind bringing all these uh, social groupings, political groupings together. Right. It's not about belonging, it's bringing them together. Mm. As the main anchor. Yes. <laughs> you know, that's the role my father used to play, Ichikolwe. Mm children will be there misunderstanding each other but there is always a way in which this uh, each caller would say come mm. and come then they come to appreciate that the differences actually are minor compared to what should be able to bring them together mm. so those who are you know squeaking in that corner and that corner please that's not the main agenda the main agenda is unity I wish we had enough time to speak to these issues on SG, really. Because uh, you earlier spoke about uh, the relevance of these political parties and uh, you bragged that indeed uh, the PF, and these are facts on the ground, that the PF has got structures across the country, uh, members of parliament, we've got uh, ward councillors, council chairpersons, mayors. But, but again, my IP, why do you want to at, deliberately, maliciously suggest that I was bragging when I was just stating facts? And I've mentioned that these are facts on the so ground. So if, well. if I say to you mm. that you're a man mm. and you agree with me that you're a man, how can that be termed as bragging? Indeed, I agree with you that uh, facts uh, use on the, the ground. Right, uh, just use the right first, term. I'm not bragging, I'm just saying the correct position. And the fact on the ground is indeed that you've got uh, several members of parliament, it's a, it's a fact, yes. chairpersons yes. and mayors. Uh -huh. But again, let's look at the relevance of uh, some of these leaders or the people behind the certain movements. Let's talk about Tonse. When you carry your research, you find that some of these names are people that really, if you check on the ground, their presence, their structures may be questionable. 
of course it's up for debate it's not me that's why you, know, uh, that's you what, go to uh, people's part as well you find that these are individuals whose political parties may be called maybe uh, you know a one man's political parties and they were your associates sg in 2021 mm. or prior to the election 2021 mm. of an election which you failed or you terribly are lost how i, I don't, I don't know to you your, seem to, to you seem to have some appetite to discredit mm. a, a process and one i'm being very careful and okay. selective in my ways i said seemingly okay seems. let me let me ask you a question yeah. we were in uka isn't it and we are in uka mm. okay yeah we worked with the uh, my good brother honorable Kalaba. he was even the minister of foreign affairs in pf mm. We worked with the Madam Savoy Mboya, mm. even in the 2021 election. Yeah. We worked with the so Honorable HK didn't work with you in 2021 election. Which, 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 what yeah, I'm saying we worked together. So you are denying that he was foreign affairs. Right? Yes, he was foreign affairs. Yes, that I'm aware. Okay. That I'm aware. And he, he basically branched off, formed a political party, and participated in an election. And the results are there for everyone to see. Mm. Just like he, we worked with the you know uh, honorable sokuba squad mm -hmm. we i think the new entrance in this situation and honorable nawak uh, yeah honorable nawak mm -hmm. the new entrance here may just be a uh, madam katek we worked with the, my young brother jackson Siragu, Siragu during right. butane and all those things didn't even participate in 2021 mm -hmm. so we are not strangers right. to each other just like we worked with the other colleagues in uh, zambia we want mm -hmm. uh, uh, muhabi lungo is our ambassador in the DRC under patriotic front and also was deployed in Washington DC we worked with the, the likes of uh, uh, some of the colleagues that are in uh, Zambia we want mm. just like we worked with some of the colleagues that were in uh, the, that are in Tonsa politicians in Zambia is a constituency that has interacted with itself in many ways and whatever but in this case we are saying your relevancy PF is what I've talked about. The relevance of others, some of them are opinion makers. Mm. Some of them, yes, their party is still growing, but as an individual, they are a national personality that the Zambian people feel if put on a platform somewhere, they can be able to effectively save the Zambian people. Right. Okay. And to that effect, Take that as your closing remarks as we go. We are not going to jump into this uh, narrative being created by detractors and wanting to suggest that there's something sinister or hypocritical about our moves. No, 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 no. Some of the people will not understand it to the, us today. And that's what leadership is all about. It's not everybody that will understand you. Sometimes you have to march on towards the end. They will come and celebrate mm. that actually the decision you made, which we misunderstood, has come to benefit all of us. In this case, the benefit we are seeking for is not for individuals to get jobs and position themselves for jobs or indeed seek office. This is the benefit that must first of all accrue to the Zambian people. And then your capabilities as an individual will find you a place for you to contribute. Right. And if you are cap comfortable and confident of what you are able to contribute and the value you bring to the table, you don't have to be scared. Be secure and be confident about yourself. Everybody else in you, in, 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 in the opposition, will play a role right. depending on what their capability is and will be able to save the Zambian people effectively better than these uh, colleagues who have only but brought misery to the public of Zambia. Thank you very much. Honorable SCA, thank you so much. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we end the conversation this evening. I've been hosting Patriotic Front Secretary General, Honorable Raphael Nakachinda. Then we'll be back again tomorrow with our State of the Nation. Thank you so much. This has been IP. May God bless Zambia. May God bless Mother Africa. Good night. All right, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.